If you're interested in deploying scalable, full-stack applications to Cloudflare, this video is for you. In this video, we'll be deploying two applications to Cloudflare's compute platforms. We'll deploy a Next.js application to Cloudflare Pages, and we'll be deploying a backend Hono service to Cloudflare Workers. We'll also be connecting a D1 database to both these applications, and we'll attach an SSL-protected domain name as well. By the end of this video, you should have a basic understanding of Cloudflare bindings, which will allow you to integrate databases, object storage, caching, queues, and other data solutions directly to your full stack services. And most importantly, you'll feel comfortable enough with the entire deployment process to deploy any of Cloudflare supported frameworks to both pages and workers. Now to get started, let's take a look at the worker playground. At its core, a Cloudflare worker is a runtime that exposes a fetch API that allows you to receive, evaluate, and respond to HTTP requests. Cloudflare pages on the other hand, is a service built on top of this worker model that offers extra features to make managing full stack applications better. But at the end of the day, no matter what web framework you use, your code will be compiled in a way that is compatible with Cloudflare's worker runtime. Now let's head over to Cloudflare's worker guide to build and deploy our application. All these frameworks will have their own specific instructions for building and deploying, but they'll all follow a common pattern using the npm create Cloudflare command. We'll run the commands for both Hono and Next in separate terminals to kick off our project. Now just note, I've already created a GitHub repo for both these projects, so you'll want to do that before you run these create commands. You'll go through the typical process of determining which DX dependencies you want in your project. At this point, we could directly deploy here, but I'm going to say no to deploy as I want to show you how to explicitly deploy both of these applications. Now that the projects are built, let's take a look at the package.json file and see how these apps run and are deployed. Notice that the Hono app only has a few scripts. There's a dev, deploy, and CF type gen, whereas the next project is a bit more involved. You have your dev, build, and start script, and you also have these Cloudflare-related scripts. You can see that all the Cloudflare-related scripts are calling this Wrangler command. Wrangler is a CLI tool built and maintained by Cloudflare you use to run, preview, and deploy your application. But you can also use it to manage Cloudflare resources like D1 databases, R2 object storage, vector databases, and so on. Looking at the dev, preview, and deploy commands for both these projects, Hono uses Wrangler dev and Wrangler deploy, whereas Next uses Wrangler pages dev and Wrangler pages deploy. Cloudflare has a recommended way of deploying applications that are framework specific. And unfortunately, they don't explicitly mention why some frameworks ship to pages while others ship to workers. Previously, Cloudflare only supported Next on pages, but recently they have released an experimental way of deploying workers using OpenNext, which unlocks features that they were not able to support on pages. We'll talk more about this later, but for now, let's continue running and deploying these applications. We'll run npm run dev in both these projects to get them started. You can see both applications are running and working as expected. So we'll get to deploying, and we'll start with the next app. If you wanted to, you could simply run npm run deploy, but by doing that, you wouldn't have the automated Git deployments out of the box. So we're going to navigate to the Cloudflare UI. Under Workers and Pages, you can go to Create, go to Pages, and connect to Git. I already have Git repositories associated with my account, but if you don't, just click on Add Account. I'm going to select my account, and then I'm going to select the repository that I want to deploy. I'm just going to go through this process. Most of these things will propagate automatically for you as you select them. So we have our main branch. We're going to go ahead and select Next.js as the framework. The build command should populate, and the build output should already be there. Now I've placed both projects under one repo, so I'm going to go ahead and select root directory, and then add the path to my Next.js project. If you only have one application in your repo, you're not going to have to do this step. After that, I'm going to go to save and deploy. Once the deployment process is done, you can continue and you can head over to the visit button. This is going to open your website. Now it might not initially load because it takes a minute for Cloudflare to propagate your site to all of their servers. But if you give it a minute and refresh, you'll see that your next application has successfully deployed. Now that we have our next app deployed, let's go ahead and deploy our Hono app to workers. To do so, we're simply going to run the npm run deploy command. It'll build and upload. And now you have a workers app deployed. Note that when you deploy to workers, you don't connect a Git repo and you deploy directly via the CLI. Now that you've completed the process of deploying your Hono application, head over to Cloudflare, find your Hono backend service, click visit, and see that your application has successfully deployed. Now that both applications are deployed, let's go ahead and see how we can manage future deployments for both pages and workers. Cloudflare Pages offers a really nice feature where you can push changes to a branch and you can preview those changes before merging to master and sending them to production. Once your changes are good, you can merge your changes to master and it will trigger a production deployment. For Cloudflare workers, we're going to push changes via the CLI once again. Note that Cloudflare workers don't offer a preview feature. So once you deploy your changes, they'll go directly to production. But if for whatever reason you have a faulty deployment to either pages or workers, both platforms offer you the ability to roll back your changes. Now for workers, if you really don't like using the CLI to deploy your changes, 
You can connect a Git repo. This is a new feature by Cloudflare. It's in beta, but you can have a similar flow that you do with pages. We're pushing the GitHub triggers a deployment. Now that we understand how to manage deployments for both workers and pages, we're going to go ahead and add a custom domain name to both sites, and then we're also going to attach a database. To add a custom domain name to your services, you need to first add a domain to Cloudflare. You can do that by going to website and add a domain and then fill out the necessary details. There's tons of videos online for this, so I'm not gonna go into detail. If you don't know how to do this, just search on YouTube. To link your custom domain name on pages, simply click custom domains and then type in the domain that you wanna link. I'm going to add a prefix as Backpine is already taken for my actual website. Once you hit continue, Cloudflare will add a CNAME for the domain that you entered. And within minutes, your domain should be viewable. For workers, head over to settings, go to domains and routes and hit add. You'll follow a similar process here. On a side note, once I have a domain attached to my workers or pages, I like to disable the URL that Cloudflare provides out of the box. Now that we have a custom domain name sorted for both our applications, let's go through the process of connecting a database. In the Cloudflare dashboard, go to Workers and Pages, click on D1 SQL Database, hit Create, and then create your database. In order to use the D1 database, you'll have to bind it to your application. Now go to your project, open the Wrangler.toml file, and you'll see a whole bunch of Cloudflare resources that are commented out. This toml file is a source of truth for your application's configurations. If you make changes here and deploy, those will automatically sync to your application and you'll be able to see those changes in the settings. Worker binding simply tell your application what resources it has access to. Let's find the D1 database in our toml file, copy this section, and, and then delete all the other bindings to clean up the space. Now that we've uncommented the D1 database binding, let's change the binding name to DB, let's change the database name to our database, and then let's put in our database ID. In our package.json, we have a cf typegen command. This will look at our wrangler.toml file, find the bindings that we've listed, and then it will add them to the emv.d.ts interface. Now that our binding interface has been created, we can access our database via the get request context method from the Cloudflare next on pages package. Note that we access the database by calling emv.db. db is specified in the wrangler.toml file under the binding name and you can provide any name you want, as long as it adheres to correct JavaScript syntax. Now you can execute SQL commands directly from the DB object, but I prefer to use an ORM to manage table schemas, manage migrations, and then interface with data in a type safe way. So I'm going to go ahead and install Drizzle ORM and Drizzle Git so we can manage our data and our tables. Now this video is not going to be a comprehensive overview of Drizzle. We're just gonna run through the basics of working with schemas, tables, and data. We'll start by creating a schemas folder with a drizzle.ts file. Inside this file, we're going to create a SQLite schema for the users table. We're then going to create our drizzle config and point to this newly defined schema. We're also going to add in some credentials to our database so we can create these tables remotely. Head over to the Cloudflare dashboard to get your Cloudflare account ID, your database ID, and your authentication token. Put these tokens in a .emv file so the process has access to them. Now head over to your package.json file and add these drizzle scripts. After running the generate command, you'll be able to see the create statement that is placed in this output file. Now run the migrate command, and you'll be able to see that your database is created in Cloudflare. Now I've added a simple page that allows you to view all the users in a database and then add new users. I also defined an endpoint that receives post requests from the UI to add the new users. I'm gonna deploy these changes so we can test this new feature. As you can see, we can submit new users into the database, and when we refresh the page, we'll be able to persist all the users that are in that table. Now that we've successfully connected a database to our application, Let's talk about local development. Each framework is going to have its own considerations for local development. But one thing to know right off the bat is that applications that run on pages are not able to connect to the D1 database locally. That said, applications that run on workers are able to connect to D1 databases locally. Now if we start up our next app locally, we're going to see that an error is thrown because a user's table does not exist. To fix this issue, we're going to add a migrations directory that points to our drizzle output inside our toml configuration. Now we can run the Wrangler D1 migrations command to create this table locally. By default, all local development data will persist in the .wrangler folder. Now we'll start up our next app again, and you can see that we're able to save data locally. Now for our Hono app, I'm gonna go through the exact same configuration process that I did for our next app. I'm not gonna show you step-by-step step for the purpose of time. Now if you remember, our Hono app was running on workers and not pages. We can run our Hono app locally and connect to a local database, just like we did in our next app. But the nice thing about workers is we can add the remote flag to our Wrangler dev script. We then add a preview database ID in our toml file, which can be the same as your production DB, but it is not best practice. We then start up our Hono app, and as you can see as we hit this endpoint, we're able to pull all user data that's sitting in our production database. 
This is the main core difference when developing locally for an application that runs on workers versus pages. Workers allows you to pass in the remote flag, which enables you to connect to all of your Cloudflare resources locally, whereas pages only supports persisting the data locally. Now, I want to close this video by saying I know that we made the deployment process seem very easy, but many of you might have existing applications that you're trying to migrate to Cloudflare from another platform. Migrating from one pro provider to another is always a tedious process, and it's going to require you to go through the documentation and really understand what's happening. So I'd recommend if you're just starting out to create your applications with the Cloudflare CLI and not worry about migrating existing services to begin with. Once you get really familiar with the deployment process and all of the configurations that's needed, you can go through the process of migrating existing applications. I also know we didn't touch all the nuances of deploying Next.js applications onto Cloudflare. It's important to note that right out of the box, Pages doesn't support all of Next features. Shipping to Pages, you have to configure all your server-side routes to have the edge runtime. Cloudflare's new experimental deployment process using OpenNext to workers doesn't require this, and they support other features. I'm going to spend some time really considering the difference between shipping a Next.js app to workers versus pages, and then document that experience. I'll make a video later on that. In the meantime, no matter what framework you're working on, the framework guide that Cloudflare provides are pretty comprehensive, but I have full confidence that if you just simply read through the framework guide, you'll be able to build and deploy whatever you want. This likely will be the only comprehensive deployment video that I make. Future content's going to focus more on solving real-world solutions with code. So if you're interested to see how I build and ship real-world solutions, I'd recommend subscribing to this channel so you can stay in the loop.